All right, so welcome everyone to our first, hopefully of many, Lunch and Learns. So I figure for our first set of topics, so I was thinking we could do different introductions to different, to different famous, famous works that have been written. You know, a lot of times people, I know I certainly have a tendency to do this, they'll skip the in, to the introduction because they want to get to the main safer, they want to learn the contents within it, but a lot of times the um, introductions really have some gems that are, that are really worth looking at. Um, and you see in, diff in different sfar, either the introductions um, you know, give the background to why the author wrote it, um, they might give a little explanation of, what's, of what to anticipate in, in the svarim, and even sometimes the introductions are really sort of works, um, works unto themselves. So I'm thinking for the first, for our first time, we do the introduction to the Igris Moshe, which is the Shilas and Shuvas, the responsa of very Moshe Feinstein. And I think with, with this safer, probably, you know, more than, more than any, more than any work, and certainly in the second half of the 20th century, there's probably not a rabbi or a posek who answers any question or investigates any question without consulting the Igris Moshe, without asking what, 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 is, what does Rav Moshe say about it. Maybe that, that's something, you know, many, many of the uh, practices that have become widespread, um, we do follow Rav Moshe. Sometimes the, so sometimes other poskim disagree, and sometimes the majority practice isn't like, isn't like him, but I don't think that there's ever a question that's dealt with where the Igris Moshe um, is it, isn't consulted. So just quick um, biographical information of, of the author. So Moshe was born in 1895. He was the rabbi in Luban in current day Belarus. Um, he came to America, he and his family came to America in 1936. These are their stories when the communists took over. Um, he made some really heroic, um, heroic efforts to keep Judaism alive. He was able to allow for a mikvah to be built out of, out of a, a public pool. There are different stories like that. He himself um, suffered to, to some extent under the communists. He came to America in 1936. The first volume of Igris Moshe of his response was published in 1959, but they're really collections of things that go a couple decades back, and certainly by the latter half of the 20th century, he really became the preeminent posek in America. When asked how uh, he became that, I think by the New York Times in the 70s, so he, um, in his humility, which you really see in this introduction, he said, you know, people, people ask me questions, and I guess they liked uh, my responses. So, um, really from there and from, he was known to be a very, that is, Ben Adam Lechavero, his conduct with other people matched his outstanding Torah knowledge. So, in this introduction to the first volume, which was published, published in 1959, so he, give, he gives some background, and we really get insight into his process of rendering decisions, but also explaining the halachic process in general. So we begin. So he says, so this book is composed of my answers of, in my humble opinion, what I think is the practical halacha, of people who wanted to know my opinion. Even, from, even though from those who are qualified to paskin halacha, lechora limno there were those who refrained from answering practical halacha questions. That many people, even who are qualified, had refrained, had been very hesitant to answer um, practical halacha questions. From, from the Gemara and Sota, which says, so Rabim Kalalim Hapila Hapila, there are many people who um, cause destruction to the world. Zetam Khachim Shalohi Gilora Umora, a Torah scholar who's not qualified to answer halach questions, but does paskin. But he says, Va Afsha Sha Amar Gam Vatsumim, and even more terrible call he goes, Zetam Khakam Shagila Hora the Enomora. 
But even worse than that is a Torah scholar who is qualified to render halachic decisions but, but, doesn't, but doesn't answer Shailas. Mitamze, cause of Rabikiva Eger, so Rabikiva says, Huva, Bakdamas, Banav, Lesaper, at Shuva Shalo, that says in the introduction to his Shuvas. Ria Sher Hutsrakti, Lahashi, Visholi, Midaigas, that I have to, that I need to answer those pe- the people with their, with their concerns. Shabalea, Bekla, Komi, Shegila, Horav, Eino, More, Ayin Sham. So he references this, this teaching. Mikol Makom, Elo, Shinimno, Hu, Ma'akar, Shagam, Atat, Sarek, Ham, Hamore lahoros kamitus hadin kamosha hayat sarik lahoros bimei rav verav huna verabi abba lekin avshevade bechol dor who midas acheres lahashiv higil lahara sherek ra kachmi hador zeshayik sheroyu shero sheyoru. So he says that in that in every generation there are unique questions. There are questions that have never been asked that are posed to the authority in that generation. Um, in this volume, and there were like, six volumes um, published in Rabosha's lifetime, two published posthumously, and really runs the gamut of every, every area in halacha, and you see questions that couldn't have been asked before, questions on technology, questions on um, marriage, divorces of different circumstances that, that hadn't been around. So he says that even though it could be there's a concept of Yurida Sadoros, even though an authority may not be as welcome, may, may not be as great as those in previous generations, nevertheless there he, he um, an authority in every generation has to respond to the questions that are that are posed to him. Right, so that now the later generations aren't going to be as great as the older generations. <coughs> so, not only in their times, and every generation they have to respond to the the um, the new questions there are some will say well you know i'm worried i'm not going to be i might not be able to to answer uh correctly and you know and, and they're afraid to do so and it's mentioned from the Sefer of Rikiva Eger that despite all the concerns, so because of this, Maimer Chazal, so he felt compelled to, to answer the, the questions of the time. So in his humility, he says, okay, all the more so if uh, Rikiva Eger was concerned Concerned about this, so he writes about himself. Uh, um, all the more so for a um, small person like me, who doesn't have Torah and wisdom uh, properly. So all the more so, I should be hesitant to offer my rulings. And even more so from printing this volume, from publishing this volume, uh, you know, for everyone to see. But he says, But, as he said, so, so um, nevertheless, the later generations, even though certainly they're not as great as the um, as the generations of, of those in the Gemara, she is vade la who should lie low, kivano mitos had din, who generally who should be concerned that they're not going to rule correctly. Kefisha who I met, emes clape shemaya, vala emes loruk, far nemor loba shemayim he. So this is, he continues to develop this idea, but it's, it really explains how, you know, how the halakhic process works. 
okay, so what if someone does their due di diligence, they, they look into the matter, they, as he's going to write later on, he sees that they don't conflict with, you know, Shas or Poskir, it's not like he missed a mission there or got a Sif and Shulchan Aruch. And nevertheless, it's not what the original intent, let's say, um, in terms of what Hashem, you know, intended or what, uh, let's say, the Rambam wanted to, to write. Um, but, he, but he says that he, he references the concept of, of Loba Shemayim, that once, once the Torah was given and once the, um, the sages of every generation wrote their thoughts down, so then the best we can do is interpret it to the best of our abilities. We do our due diligence. And even if, in a certain sense, it's not correct, it's that, that, that it's still okay and it's still proper to, to Paskin. So if the Talmud Chacham, the Pose goes and he looks in Shas and Poskim, so he does it, he, he, he labors in it, he does it with a balanced way, way of thinking, he does it with Yira Shemayim, he's concerned about making a mistake, so he's still obligated to Paskin, even if it could be that that in in reality or if in the original intent that was that 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 he he Paskin differently. Does that mean that Loba Shmaimi that when someone gives a psak, that is the correct psak, at least for that? Time? Is that what he's saying, or it could be wrong, but you still have to follow? Him. So, so later on, he says he, he says two things. He says one that it's still a mitzvah to do it; that we have to investigate and and do our due diligence, um, and that. But I guess the question is: is that halach? Is that halach in the sense that now people are obligated to follow it? So, I, so I think I think the answer the answer would be yes. I guess some, someone could disagree, but some you know we, a, a post that gets gets a question they. He says, you know, later on, you know, people ask, is Psach Allah a, a democratic system? So, to a certain extent, yes and no. It's democratic in the sense that anyone is entitled to, to try. He just says, okay, you need these qualifications. You need to know Shas and post game and be a balanced thinker. So, it's, 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 a, it's a tall order. But he, but he, but he says that, that, a, that a Chacham, he quotes the Doran Sanhedrin, that a Chacham can only judge what's what's in front of him and he, and if he and if he does his due diligence so then I think we would say that that is the correct is the correct halacha. Why the he says, "For Alkazen Nemar Shagam Dvara of Diverli came Chayim, Meakar Shelo Nira Perush Kemosha Pasuk Velo Hayestirol Dvara." That right? That it is. I, I think we would say, yeah, that, that that this is. I mean, Halacha it literally means the way we're supposed to act. So we ask a Shaila, and the Posek does his due diligence, and he says, um, right, he doesn't miss a mission. There's no. Uh, there's no steer, there's no conflict between sources. He understands the sources correctly. So lo the Torah, the Torah was given for us to, to interpret. And if he does this, he gets reward. Right, so, so it's, it, it's interesting that he, that he phrases it like this. At least, at least, at least the, way I, the way I understand it, and maybe other people understand it differently, is it sounds what he's saying, even, even if the by truth, I'm not sure that he's saying that we're doing it wrong, but, but speaking about original intention, meaning, okay, we try, we labor to find, um, you know, Pshat, the correct explanation, the Rambam or Shulchan Aruch and earlier sources, we do the best we can. Maybe if we were to go back and, and ask, right, okay. and later on he actually mentions, we'll see it, he mentions the, mentions the famous Gemara, how uh, when Moshe Rabbeinu, he, he was, um, he went into the base measures of Rabbi Kiva and he heard it and he saw him darshaning on the crowns of the letters. So, so he doesn't, so Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know what he was doing. He never got the explanation, but it's, it says later on, we'll see, it says that, okay, but once it was written down, 
Rabbi Kiva was was fulfilling this process that we have the Torahs there and and he was he was learning the Torah to, to the best of his ability and it, maybe Moshe Rabbeinu didn't even think about that but but that would, but but once the Torah was given so it's no longer in heaven it's for us to try to determine obviously with with the tools that we have at our disposal so it seems like Emes Lahora means that the Hora was done right right in other words that there that the that there is an objective truth of there is an objective one true halacha. We're not postmodern, but it doesn't matter. But because there is a one true halacha, but in a sense it's unknowable, or in a sense it's irrelevant because what matters is that there was a psak. You can have that the also, hurrah was done. You can have conflicting psak. Right. Also, you, got right. You, were, you following the one you got yeah. right. means that's appropriate. You know, right. Right. He mentions all the, yeah. as long as the psak was done right, the way he describes, done by a balanced, done by a balanced thinker who is approaching it with the proper respect. But how do you know when you're asking somebody? Well, you have to find somebody who. Right. Well, so is, to some extent, it comes down to who you trust to. Who you trust with the knowledge, and the better educated you are, the better a judge you are of who has the right technical knowledge, and it also comes down to your judge of character and your mind, your, ju- your judgment call. It's a tough, I think it's mm-hmm. tough right. Someone who doesn't know, if they're honest enough, will tell you, I don't know the answer yet. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else, someone else, yeah. ego wise, a love may decide, ah, well, I'll catch, I'll, I'll make a pill pull and come up with an answer, and then that'll be right. Personally, I only ask. <laughs> Shilas to people who I know and trust on a personal level, and who I also know know the halacha better than I do. Yeah, I remember that um, when Rabbi Shai Shachter, Rabbi Herschel Shachter's son, so he gave a short uh, hesped on Rabbi Yashiv. He had mentioned a couple times. So, so he said, okay, so Rabbi Yashiv was, you know, regarded, you know, certainly by by many as the preeminent posek in, in his time. So Rabbi Shai Shachter was saying, okay, but how, you know, how, how do we know who's the posek? Anyone who knows more than us, you know, for all we know, could be the Gadol Ador. We know this much, someone knows more. Okay, so how do we determine? So he said, a, um, perhaps a, a good way of determining is, is if people who we know are regarded as big Tami Techachabim will say that other people are a step up from them. So he said he's close to this father, Rabbi Herschel Shachter, he's close to the Usher Weiss, and both of them, when they have Shilas, they would go to Rabbi Yashiv. So people who we know have a reputation of knowing so much more than us, if they say someone, the people say to Ramosha, they say someone knows, we have our most difficult questions, we go to this person, so I guess that could be a good way of gauging um, who's really qualified. Well, that's in terms of technical In terms knowledge. of technical knowledge. How how do you? It's an uncomfortable question, but how are you going to judge so judge someone's integrity who you've never met? Because hopefully the people who we know had to have integrity. Well, also, mm. well, you have. Then it's not a matter of someone who knows more than you saying that someone knows more than him. That's a matter of someone who you know to be a good judge of character also saying. Right. Yeah. Right. So hopefully they go they go hand in hand. And he says, um, hope. hope. So the Kabbal Schar Al Hora. So Absha Emes Eno Kipirusho. Rochia Kidula Mize, I mean, how the Shabbos Dav Koflamid. So there's a Gemara in Shabbos, Amr Bietzach, Ir Achaz Haya Beret Israel, Shayo Osin, Kerbelezer, Venasalema Kodesh Barku, Schar Gadol. So there was, there's a account in, in the Gemara, Belezer. Um, so he held, you know that, that on, for a Milos, so you can be Machal Shabbos to do the actual Mila. So Relezer held that you could be Mechal Shabbos not only for the Mila, but even for the preparations for the Mila. Now the Chachamim don't paskin like that, and the Halacha, the majority, does, doesn't go like that, but you see what he says. So he says, so he says, oh, sorry, there was, there was a city that followed Rabbi Lezer, and then HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave them a uh, schar gadol, gave them a big reward. Shemesu bizman and shagazru malkos harasha, nizera al hamilo, lo gazru al osar ir. Av shemes aliba the din nisa kolor Rabbi Lezer. So they say because they followed their authority, 
they, they followed Rebbe, Rebbe Lezer was the uh, was the halachic authority in this town. The people followed that, and obviously the following them showed a dedication to Brismila, even though the majority of halacha, even though the rest of us don't have a right to follow that because of their dedication and because of their commitment to, to Mila, so they were actually spared from a decree by the Romans. Even though, he says, and not only that, and if we were to actually follow Rabbi Lezer, so we be Michal Shabbos, violate Shabbos on a Torah level, and we would get, uh, we would get, um, get the death penalty if we did it, uh, if, 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 we, if we did it on purpose, and we'd have to bring a carbon if we did it to maze it. So certainly, even though it's something that would be a most serious violation for everyone else, because we, Paskin, you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos, because here was Rabbi Gilezer, so he did his due diligence. He was a big Torah scholar. Um, and even though the majority didn't go like him, those people who were followers of him, and they were consistent, and presumably they followed other things that Rabbi Gilezer said, so then... And because they did that, so they were actually rewarded for it. Even though, for, for other people, one, one, they're not really allowed to follow it because most people are supposed to go like the majority. And, um, and, if, right, and, and, and if they did, so that, that would be punishable. So does someone have a question? Question? It's wild. That's all. Yeah, you'll like it. For me, it's good. For you, Stila. And you really say it, it, go, it I guess it, 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 really, it really goes like this idea that, okay, Lezer, he did his due diligence, it didn't, he had the right, um, yeah, he the right character, he, he knew the halacha, mm-hmm. and, okay, so the, the, the majority interpreted the halacha differently, but, but if people followed him, they were consistent, so that, so, then we would say, lo that yeah, they, what that does that mean when there's a Sanhedrin? That if the majority says that it, that it's skila, then they're not. Then are they going to say, "Oh, he follows Rabbi Eliezer," or, or what? Well, so that would be like yeah, a that, like a that, Zuck and Mom, right? Right. There. Yeah. So right. So the again, it's a, 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 a bigger discussion, but really, wh- when there there's a difference between after we have the Sanhedrin. So we, when when we had the Sanhedrin, there was one authority. So a Sanhedrin made a ruling. That was it. And even a sage who disagreed, even if he may have done his due diligence and he was right, but he told people to, to, to um, act in a way that's contrary to Sanhedrin's ruling, so he would actually be the high of Misa. So that's a different story. But now that we don't have a central authority, so there's somewhat, it, it's not so clear you know, that, that the halakha will go like one is supposed to be the other. The story of the top, uh, when they're having the argument, it's a little basketball come out. Oh. Or, 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 yeah. I mean, he was right, but it was still correct. Right. Right. right, that he was, that even though, right, I think it, it, it strengthens your point, that even, that even though, right, Klape Shemai in, in heaven, it, it was like him, but the halacha, um, that if you have the minority and the majority, so the halacha goes like, like the majority, and he, and, he, and he was outvoted, right. So this pluralist, but this pluralistic stuff can only work without a Sanhedrin. Right, right. If the, and he said, even, right, even so if the... If the, the Sanhedrin passed in the wrong, still is that point. It's still down. Yeah. Bashim, which is what happened at the time of that time. It happened at the time of Right. In other words, right or wrong, and right, in other words, the key value here is this MS Lahora, that, yeah. the, that the process was followed, and whether, whether that means multiple outcomes or one outcome and whether it means the right answer or the wrong answer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I guess when we say that they're wrong, it may have been, you know, we, we'd say n- not the original intent, but he writes, if you, do, if you do your due diligence in the process, you know it doesn't conflict with any of the sources. It's not like, oh, I forgot that the Shulchan Aruch said this. That doesn't mean that it's a valid sock. It means like, I passed it correctly, but I did my due diligence. I worked. He said I, he labored to understand the sources and Heard from from Rabbi Moshe Tendler that he said that Rabbi Moshe he put a lot of work in his in a, into his chuvas. He would write it three four times, um, and then he said when he actually published it, he would feel very confident in it. But but he as he mentions here, he really labored. He labored to understand the sources. He would labor very much to understand. They called the Mitzias, the actual situation, which is that it's really like an you know, art, not only answering a shiloh but asking a shiloh that 
you need to give the posek every bit of information that could impact on the answer. So if you, you do all of that, so maybe it wasn't, we'd say maybe it wasn't like the original intent, but I would say there's, there are two different types of being wrong. There's being wrong is, oh, I, I forgot that, you know, I didn't know that the source existed, and, say, and, and as opposed to determining the halacha, that I, I, I use the tools at my disposal, and, um, and, and that would be considered that it's uh, proper, proper to follow. Right, if he does it with all his strength, even though the, um, the maybe he, what he calls the emeth is, 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 not, is, not, is not like that. Some who say that it's us, or some who say it's Mutter, she calls man, Shalom Isa Kekad, Yoko Ko Echad, Lahoris Bim Komo, as I did with Rabbi Lezer, that if there's no definitive ruling, so everyone can do and be consistent with the authority that they follow, Kemosha Sover, Afshadin Amiti, who Raka Echad Mehem. So we see many differences of opinion, both in serious, um, serious prohibitions. Um, between Svardi communities that generally go like the Rambam and the Beis Yosef, both the Ashkenazi. Uh, communities who go like the Bali Tosvod and the Ramo, even though perhaps the corrected, I found this interesting when I, when I was preparing, maybe it's not like either one of them. So he says, even though it's like, like one of them, it, it could be. I mean, um, saying, you know, like, if you have, like, presumably someone, right? Because like, you're saying that it could be neither one of them. Right, I, I was, I was, I don't know if he but, means. But presumably, like you know, if everybody does their due dil- dil- diligence, so someone's going to come up with the right, right. answer. <laughs> it could be, but right, right. But even if meaning, so both really Svardi good. and Ashkenazi communities, and even the sub communities with them, that they they're relying on great authorities, and even if the sock is different for, um, for, for the different communities, as PC, Svardi community and, and Ashkenazi communities on certain things actually follow different definitive. Sakib, and even that, told the question may not be proper for some, maybe as an Ashkenazi Jew, as a Sephardic Jew, you are bound by, by following that opinion. But even if there are disagreements, so they both, they both have great people upon whom to rely. And he said, it's Devar Lekim Chaim. Before Ashkain, but Sanhedrin, Davav, Akasha Omar, Vyu Adayanim, Yodim, Esmi, Hain Donin, they should know that whom they're judging. And before whom they're judging, who they'll have to, to give um, accounting. So maybe, maybe a dying will say, what, what, what do I need this for? And Rashi explains, if, if, I, if I err, so then I'll be punished. But Tamalomar, Vimachem Bidvar, Hamishpat. We say in the Apostle from Divrei Yamim, with them is the um, the matter of justice. So ein lo ledayan elamasha ein of rose that a dayan can only judge what facts are are presented to him, which is um, yeah a reason why when when asking a a shaila you really have to include every every bit of information that's there and. Because a post like they they only can um, they can only rule on the facts that are that are presented, uh, and so that we responsible to to give the facts. But they they and a post is also as you see Rav Moshe did he had to really labor to to find all the information he learned about technology and and consulted experts. This is like today with Shlomo Zalman Orbach for electricity for other things in a great post game. Even if they didn't have personal expertise, they would consult with experts. They had the expertise in the Torah, but obviously that, that wasn't enough to answer to answer modern questions. They had to they had to know all the facts, and based on their understandings, um, that a <coughs> right based based on their understandings, they 
they ain't able to die in Ella Masha ain't over oh so they they judge based on based on what they saw it's actually you see in some areas perhaps the the ruling changed with electricity on Shabbos, maybe from how they understood electricity to begin with. Um, so you see, maybe even based on understandings, but in different eras. So I. Right, right. So. In the 1800s, they were much more like lenient with electricity, or at least Yom Tov, yeah, and yeah. other occasions because. They, uh, right, so you really have to know the, the, the facts on the ground. Was a chemo- because some thought it was a chemical, it was a chemical reaction process, in the light bulb. Which yeah. it isn't. Which it isn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 So, so he says that, that if, that if this, the paragraph concludes, this is the third paragraph, it concludes that, right. that if that a postdoc, he has all the knowledge, he, has, he uses, he tries to find out the the Metsius, the reality, and, um, and, then, uh, and then he's not going to be punished, he's going to be rewarded. So we have about seven minutes, about seven minutes left, so, I'll, so I, can just, I can summarize part of it. So actually, we, we touched upon some of these points. Um, so right, there's the there's Gemara where he sees, where he sees Rabbi Akiva, he's, he's, learning the, right, he's, he's learning the crowns in the Torah, and then he, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't know what he's speaking about, but Rabbi Akiva is... Is, is using the tools at his disposal, and and that and that's the way the halachic process develops. So the second paragraph on on the on the second side. So now he speaks about what a um, posek has to do. Makashin's bar. We've explained she emes lahora who mash nira lekacham achresha amel. The ego levara halacha, so he has to work and uh, try to determine the halacha. B'shas of a poskim kafi choko, the kovet rosh of yira me Hashem yisparach. He has to do it with with fear of God and with a balanced outlook. Shekin yesh lahoros lemaisev is emuchui of lahoros, and if he does this, he's obligated to to paskin. The gam chacham shebedor hazeh yesh akashivem hegu lahoram muchui yavim lahoros mishum. Sharasam Nekshav Din Emes. And if they do and they labor to do it, so that's considered, that actually answers the question, that, that's considered uh, true. So he says, the Gemara says that a Talmud Chacham who makes a mistake, so his his uh, his, his his errors are considered like. Mizin, and they're considered like Zdonos, they're considered um, as if he did it intentionally. But but, but what what does that mean? So it's, from that it sounds like you shouldn't try to try to paskin. It's a dangerous uh, dangerous territory. But he says, Hurachilo Tarko Levaro Hativ that that's only when they didn't try to to labor to the best of their ability. So Avizahir Biosim Mizem Avora, the Rachi says in Avush, Shakas of Havizahir Belumo the Papa of Lakor Dikduke Shimitoksha aim Dakta came Belumo to Morin, Luzokadin Nasa Kazadono. So so when it says when it condemns someone, when it says that it's very serious transgression when someone rules incorrectly, so that's only when when they don't labor to uh, to determine the, the facts and the halacha. Right, so we'll go to the, the next paragraph. Um, so he, he's, he's he's wrapping it up. He's saying, so I've I've endeavored to um, right, so he's saying that that these are specific cases that that you can't necessarily also look at these chubas and determine what the luck would be in another situation. <laughs> so, so, so in the Gemara in Brachos uh, describes, the beginning of Brachos describes how David HaMelech, he was uh, up to his knees with blood and the placenta and and all that, trying to answer Hilkos Nidish child, trying to be uh, matir women to their husbands. So right, so he says, "Shemar David lo chasidan nivani yidei mufluklim b'damu shabi reshilia kene lahater isha lebaila." So the Torah, so he says that 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 this is that this is difficult. 
Um, you, ha you have the king, the, the king even has rules, he can't be mochel in his kavod, he, he has to, you know, act in a, in a certain way that's, that's befitting for, for a king. So he said here he was answering these, uh, you know, get it, get really getting his, his hands dirty. So, so but, but he says, Shalachayin lomar, the asu l'kakam l'shloach es ha-shomi menu l'kakam akher de kevan, so, and he says certainly there were there were other, uh, you know, people who could answer who could answer the Shiloh, but a postic's not allowed to turn someone away if they if they have the ability to to answer the question. So it's, it's like uh, like a surgeon who says you know okay he wants to be humble he but he's he's the most qualified to do a surgery so he can't say go to someone else. Um, that that it's a mitzvah if you know the answer if you're able to help these people then then you have the responsibility. To do so. So he says, um, So he says, he continues with, um, Yes, a, a a prayer uh, for himself that he should be able to rule correctly, and um, you know continue to be able to answer people's question. Okay, Matsasi, the last paragraph. Gam the nachon. Let hisa ma'akar she eni bazeh shalo kimivare halacha she kol tamet chakum moro haroe yain medvarim biyifkon ba atzmo im lahoros kain. Um, so. He says it at, at the end, and this is, I think, in a, uh, one shows his humility, but also um, you know, an important part of the halachic process. So he invites anyone who wants to disagree with him. He says he's, pre he's presenting this um, based, on, based on his, um, his work and, his, and the best understanding that he has of the sources. But if, some, if another Talmud Chacham disagrees with him, so he says, by all means, uh, they have the right to do that. Again, we said the it's a democratic in the sense that, any, that anyone has the right to, but we have to, you know, someone certainly has to, <laughs> has to know what they're doing. Yeah. But he writes in other tshuvas that... Um, Isn't Rav Shalom arguing a lot? On some things. Actually, there's a... There's a... Um, we're actually discussing uh, two, two Shabbos ago that Rav Moshe has um, pretty big chiddish. So he says there's... Right. So for me, is a concept that we allow people to be Mechal Shabbos for things, to, you know, to, for things that you're allowed to be Mechal Shabbos for, even if, so, so, the, so the, the, the case that he's working with is, okay, a doctor ha has to go to the hospital, um, you know, for Pukot Nefesh, to be, so he's allowed to be Mechal Shabbos, but, but what, what about returning to the hospital? His job is done, he's already there, so can, can he be Mechal Shabbos to return back? So Rav Moshe's position is that he is allowed to do it because if not, he'll be discouraged from doing it again. And the Shlomo Zaman Orbach, um, he writes in his response that he spoke to Rav Moshe, he got permission to disagree, and basically writes that Rav Moshe was entirely incorrect. What is he talking about? It, it's his job. Of course, he's going to go back again. You can say that with anything. I think he says if your suit's dirty, so then you're not, what, you have to clean it because then you're not going to go out of the house again. So he, 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 he very he very strongly dis disagrees, but he writes that he got permission from from Rav Moshe, and um, Rav Moshe gave him permission. Like he says here, that any Tamil Chacham who wants uh, has is 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 allowed to is allowed to disagree. Um, but obviously, we see the kind of people, the caliber of people who who disagreed with him. Um, and one thing that I read that his son uh, David Feinstein Shlita, so he said in general, but you you go through and maybe at a later point we can go through some of the uh, of his chuvas. You would if you go through them. So some are some are longer, some are shorter, but in each one it's very detailed. He explains the rationale of his decisions. He he brings his proofs. He doesn't just put up a sign and say this is you know th th this th this is usher. And if you disagree, you're wrong. So it's, it, so I've heard that David Feinstein says that his father really never asserted anything on the basis of Das Torah, on the basis of authority, that anything that he wrote, so he explained the reasons, and he invited any, anyone who was qualified to, to disagree with them, um, which 
again, shows the general humility which Rabbi Khan has said from personal experience and many others um, have pointed out uh, that Ramosha had um, and that he, that he was really, that, as, as he said in the beginning, he was, there's probably no person who endeavors to answer a halakhic question without, uh, without, without seeing what, what Ramosha said. There's probably not an equivalent now in America and um, hopefully th- through this we got some insights into sort of how the halakhic process works and, um, and, and, and Ramosha's approach to halakha and to the chuvas contained inside. Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, Very good, yeah. Yeah. We have a big point.